Rick Stanton gave more details today about the incredible rescue by him and his diving colleagues in the caves in Thailand. He described the first moment he saw the boys and their football coach and realised that they were all still alive. We'd been laying a line, pathfinding, and we were right at the very limit of our last bit of line, and we were actually under in an airspace so we could talk. And the first thing I noticed, I was actually sniffing the air as we'd been going along, where appropriate, and I sniffed and I could smell. I could smell them. They heard us, we heard them, and they started coming down a slope, uh, and they were coming down one by one. They were, the ledge wasn't really as described. They, had, they were around a corner out of sight, and they were coming down one by one. And as they, was coming, as they were coming down, I was counting them, one, two, three, until I got to 13. So when John said, how many of you, you are there, I already had counted them all in, all, all there. How, how many of you? Thirteen. Brilliant. And until with the fact we got all thirteen, I was I was a little bit concerned. But once we got thirteen, that was that was fantastic. But of course, I was always thinking, okay, this is just the start. How how on earth are we going to get them out? That was the I was already on the next stage. Great to have found them, but but it it was no means any way certain what the outcome would be. The outcome required the children to be led underwater by a diver and they had to agree to be sedated to reduce any anxiety they may feel. We presented it, that was the only way they were going to get out and they had to be sedated to do so. So uh, ethically we, were, we had to tell them a day prior to the first uh, rescue mission <coughs> that we were going to sedate them and bring them out and they had to agree to that. Incredibly, it's now emerged that the children were unconscious for the duration of the rescue. They were not conscious, no. They were, they, the children, none of them remember the journey at all. The journey was about an hour and a half, and the children had to put their trust in the divers. Each uh, d of the four divers was assigned a, a child on the day. We would dress them in a wetsuit. We had a buoyancy uh, device on them and a harness, a cylinder, and then the full face mask. And we made sure that everything was on properly, very good seal on the mask. Everything was tightly cinched down. So they were basically a package with a handle, like a shopping bag. Generally, we were holding them so close, their head would be there, my head would be there. So it'd be protecting, if, I, if we hit the ceiling, it'd be my head that'd be bumped, not theirs, and you could, their exhaust bubbles were coming up right beside me. So you could, you could feel and see, see the bubbles and hear them. But Rick and the other divers knew that they had each boy's life in their hands. Well, it's a huge responsibility. We're used to transporting all sorts of things underwater, but to transport an, a human life is about the ultimate responsibility. I did have a dream the other night that, that, that we had, we'd found them, but we hadn't got them out yet. We had, to, we had all that to come. But luckily, it wasn't true. I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of messages from strangers. It's more than thanks, it's like, thank you for, um, thank you for what you've done and you've shown a, a great example of humanity to the, to the world.